As you may see from my titles, I slightly changed uh, the topic of my pa paper. Uh, just a little slide, so you can see the Russian, I don't know how to, pron to pronounce exactly, it's Harvard, Harvardian style, I would say, Russian, Russian, uh, not Ruthenian, um, but Russian Bible by Dr. Francis Karina between devotion, art, and market, I would say so. I, I need to make some... Uh, introduction to my paper. So, in my paper I want to focus uh, on the role the, the print Bible played in early, in late medieval early modern societies. My intent to explore the different functions the print Bible might have enjoyed in a particular society um, in this very um, particular period uh, that was uh, defined by many, many uh, essential um, developments. First of all, I would say, if we take uh, Grand Duchy of Lithuania, it was a very important period in cultural development of this uh, uh, state. First of all, Grand Duchy was uh, at the time experience, was experiencing of a, a very profound transformation. Uh, marked by uh, growing urbanization, uh, development of uh, urban cultures, cities, towns. Vilna, uh, now Vilnius, was uh, the greatest uh, uh, urban center in uh, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Also, there was the rise of uh, the vernacular, old uh, Belarusian language, very important. Uh, most of books of so-called uh, uh, Lithuania Metrica um, was uh, written in Old Belarusian. Uh, also, there were uh, essential technological uh, developments uh, in the first event, uh, the arrival of um, printing. Printing uh, was very... So, um, Skorina's venture was uh, a range of different uh, developments, both social, economic, cultural, and even technological. But uh, let me um, focus more on my um, particular topic. Mm. Uh, I, I'm going to um, focus on the Russian Bible by Skorina as a functional object uh, to explore this Bible as uh, Functional object. Um, uh, just uh, let me a few preliminary remarks uh, in this connection. Ex prints, uh, many prints, and Bibles in particular existed, uh, functioned as functional objects. Uh, they were considered as devotional tools. Oh, just uh, the print Bible is functional object. Um, uh, every print and Bible in particular could be considered as a commodity. Mm. Uh, also, I'm going to focus uh, on uh, the personality of Dr. Francis Carina as a businessman. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, his alleged market strategies uh, uh, to... Um, facilitate uh, his uh, um, product, also the Russian Bible's alleged audience. Uh, uh, we paid it a very famous uh, chronicle from Beham's Chronicle, Krakow, Anno Domini 1506, exactly at the time when Skorina was a student at Krakow. Beham it's a German merchant family because at the time Krakow was 50% uh, Polish population, Slavic population, about 50% of Germans. It was Polish German city at the time, and German was very popular, was very widespread uh, in the city. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, when we uh, talking about Francis Carina, we often overestimate his uh, capacity as entrepreneur, as a businessman. In reality, we know that uh, he grew up in a, 
in a merchant family. His father was uh, quite a big merchant, first mentioned in um, historical sources, uh, and uh, uh, 1492. Um, at that uh, time, he had a conflict with Muscovite merchants because of uh, some reasons. Uh, uh, so he grew up in a pretty well wealthy, rich family. And this family had enough um, money to send him to study to one of the biggest universities in the area at the time. I mean, uh, University at Krakow. His uh, brother, John Ivan, was also involved in international trade of uh, uh, pelts, furs, um, but largely skins. Uh, there is a litigation between uh, Francis Carina and his family and uh, Polish German merchants uh, in Poznan in uh, 1529. This fact, this litigation uh, in Poznan uh, testifies that uh, Francis Carina was involved in business. Uh, he was very active as businessman. And his uh, Bible was uh, also a product of his business initiative. His was uh, his uh, greatest uh, advanced venture. So we need, when we are talking about Skarina, we need to focus on his uh, activities as a merchant, as an entrepreneur, as businessman. It was indispensable at the time to launch such a great project as a, a printing um, Bible. He needed to have uh, business knowledge. Uh, uh, going, uh, going further about his initiative, I need to mention that uh, Skarina's project involved uh, um, different strategies. First of all, before going to, to embark to, uh, on uh, his project, he, need, he needed to um, estimate what kind of book he might uh, print, he, he had to uh, embark on. His choice was, of course, Bible. Why Bible? Because uh, I would say the nature of, of, the, of a book to be printed by Francis Carina was largely determined by not only commercial pressures, but also by a particular spiritual atmosphere in Europe uh, in the later Middle Ages. Uh, scholars often characterize that epoch, this time, late Middle Ages, early modern time, as veritable explosion of devotional forms. This increase in interest in devotional forms was caused by the reform movement called the Devotio Moderna, modern contemporary devotion in Latin. The reform movement started in the north, in present-day Netherlands, and uh, was focused on the development of personal piety mm. based on the teachings of Christ and the cultivation of a simple private life. Prayer and meditation were seen as important spiritual practice, accompanying a pious life. Gradually, the movement uh, spread uh, across uh, the entire Europe, even, in my opinion, uh, reaching uh, Eastern uh, Europe. Mm. Possibly the Berlandines, uh, the Berlandines convent in Polotsk, founded in 1498, um, um, was definitely a place which promoted the devotional style of life. It's a, a convent where allegedly Francis Carina was educated before going to Krakow uh, to study at uh, um, local university. The increased interest in devotional practices within early Renaissance society created the need for devotional objects, which could be an aid in both prayer and personal meditation. Um, 
Since the emergence of print, chronologically coincided with the reform movement, prints started very soon to be treated as, by consumers as ideal devotional tools, mainly due to their inherent multiplicity and lower costs of production when compared to the more expensive medium of painting. In particular, the widespread uh, use of prints took place in conjunction with prayer books, books of hours, and Bibles. So, uh, this widespread of um, the print Bible was uh, mostly caused by a particular spiritual atmosphere in Europe, uh, growing, the growing need in devotional forms and objects. Uh, so, there, there was nothing strange uh, that Francis Carina embarked uh, on on, on the printing of Bible, because there was a, a neat requirement in such devotional tools, uh, in such a product as Bible, Bible as commodity. Uh, also, we need to say that printing, however, at the time was very risky venture, requiring substantial investments of capital that usually largely exceeded financial possibilities of any individual entrepreneur. Yes, uh, Skarina's family was uh, a pretty, um, I would say, well-to-do, rich family, but they had no enough money to invest into um, Francis' project. So, like other printers, in contemporary Europe, uh, Dr. Francis Carina had to, he was dependent on financial backing. And uh, uh, he had to establish uh, very uh, good bilateral relations with influential merchants and bankers in order to launch his new commercial initiative. Um, he was uh, fortunate enough to attract uh, attention of a uh, number of very influential bankers, including his uh, compatriots like uh, uh, its printing shop, John Stradanus, its famous uh, author from the Netherlands. So, uh, it looks it's what what looks looked like. Uh, a printing shop in the early 16th century. Yeah. Yes. You can identify different uh, categories of people uh, who were working uh, in the shop. Mm. It was very, very um, big team of people, maybe dozens of people who were involved uh, in the running of a single uh, press. So he was dependent, but he was fortunate enough to obtain uh, uh, subsistence uh, from such persons as, uh, I would say, Bogdan Onkov, George Edvernik, his uh, compatriots from Vilna. Possibly he was financed by other persons, but we have no uh, reliable information. We know only f from uh, the books of uh, the Russian Bible, Bible that he was uh, supported by mostly by um, Bogdan Onkov or Bogdan Onkovich. And, uh, so uh, it should, it must have been a very beneficial project also for his investors, for his backers like uh, Advernik or Onkov. Such financial arrangement between them and Skarina might have had uh, um, opposite side because uh, um, Skarina, uh, um, in this way, uh, the, we cannot exclude that supplies that there was a prearranged number of copies that um, had to be supplied to Onkov or Advernik. It was a commercial bilateral agreement. Mm. So, second point, Skorina needed financial support, and he was fortunate enough to get to get it. Uh, he was uh, 
at least uh, at the initial stage of his uh, activities. Uh, but if most of Skarina's financial backers were mostly from his, mostly his compatriots from Vilna or perhaps of Polotsk, we cannot exclude uh, his brother John's Ivan's participation in uh, Francis project. But eventually, Skarina set up his printing press in other locations, not in uh, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, not even in Poland, not in Germany, but in Prague. Why Prague? Uh, Mm. According to contemporary scholars, Karina's choice of Bohemian Prague as a location of his printing uh, press might have been defined by the fact that in the early 16th century, Prague was a prosperous commercial and business center, not located on principal European trade routes leading from the east to the west and from the north to the south. Mm. Uh, possibly uh, Prague uh, possessed a substantial body of resident merchants from Lithuania and Rus. We know that his brother John was active in Poznan and Gdansk. Minutes. Okay, just I'm. Um, so the second, um, the just I'm going to conclude focusing on the uh, Skarina uh, initiative, but most important, um, uh, his choice of Prague as a location for his uh, press was defined by the fact that uh, Bohemia was uh, in the 15th century the, greater, the greatest importer of books into the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Most of books in the 15th century came to Lithuania and Rus from Prague. But instead of uh, uh, buying books in uh, Prague or in uh, other locations in Bohemia, uh, Dr. Francis Corina uh, decided to set up a print in Bohemia to print books in his own language, in old Belarusian language. It's, it was a new attitude, it was a new initiative, it was a revolutionary um, move by Dr. Francis Corina. So it was planned earlier, uh, later to ship to s books from Prague to Lithuania and neighboring countries. Uh, you can see just very similar faces. You can see Dura and Skorina and it's very, it's very from genre, it's very first. Skorina sign from calendar, John Regio Montanas, Königsberger, famous German astronomer, mathematician and astrologer. Uh, okay, just. Uh, finally, I would say that uh, even the choice of a date of starting a project was, uh, I would say, thoroughly, cautiously calculated by Francis Carina and his uh, remarkable team. This date is very uh, traditionally the 6th August. It's considered as the day of uh, Lord's Transfiguration, one of the greatest uh, dates in the Christian calendar. Moreover, on this day, in 1517, the celestial combination was believed to guarantee the success of any deal. The moon in a trine, astronomical aspect meaning 120 or one set of the ecliptic, especially sim simultaneously with the Sun, Jupiter, Saturn and Venus, was very beneficial for any project uh, you can see here, in just I need to make larger. You see here, I don't know. So, you see, August 6th, according to contemporary calendar, it's very beneficial constellation of stars on this day. Skorina was a very. Six, you can consult um, August 6th and see uh, Sun in a triangle with. Uh, Moon, Moon, Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus. Trine, it's an aspect, astrological, astronomical aspect. Uh, mm. So the choice of this date, in my opinion, wasn't occasional, uh, wasn't accidental. It was thoroughly, uh, cautiously calculated by Skorina. Uh, so possible possible uh, in 
inspiration for Dr. Scarina. Similar, okay, it's just let me uh, conclude with few remarks concerning uh, uh, functionality of the Russian Bible, Bible by Skorina. First of all, I need to say uh, the Bible, this Bible um, might have functioned on different level, levels. First of all, um, this Bible was treated as, a, I would say, devotional tool, especially the Psalter, maybe some other books, because it's very complicated, very with different books. Uh, second, this um, Bible could be functioned also as a art product, as a fine art product, uh, as a art commodity, and as such, um, this Bible uh, could 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 have uh, found uh, its way to collections of. Uh, a number of wealthy, uh, rich uh, persons, uh, investors at the time. So, second, uh, the Bible also existed as a, I would say, um, didactical, pedagogical mean. Skorina emphasized that in a number of, of uh, prefaces to his Bible, where he uh, Mm, especially emphasizing he, uh, this Bible's pedagogical, uh, didactical function. And finally, the Bible could be used as a platform, tribune, for disseminating, for uh, spreading different ideas, uh, conceptions, uh, issues, very, very urgent at the time. And uh, in this capacity, he was uh, uh, quite uh, successful. He was able to produce a Bible that was uh, uh, required by different categories of people, especially lay population, especially urban elites. And this Bible might have functioned in different capacities. Just. Uh, Final remarks, as a, I repeat once again, as a devotional tool, as an art object, as a didactical uh, tool, and I hope, uh, I am sure, as a tribune, as a platform for disseminating uh, urgent issues. Thank you for your attention, and sorry for <laughs> taking your time. Sorry, thank you. Just thank you.